Maranatha, my PBC family and friends, Pastor Brian here with another Quick Bite, Living the Word. Uh, today our words going to come from Mark chapter 8, if you want to turn there. But let me give you a little bit of a backstory here as to what, what put this upon my heart today. So it's interesting to me how many people I hear are getting offended during this time. And I'll be honest with you, there's a lot of things that get, a, quote unquote, offended over. And what's interesting to me about this, in particular, uh, sitting in a leadership position within the church and stuff, is how much uh, you know, grumbling, complaining, backbiting, things like that that we've had to deal with during this time, as if everyone has an opinion and that as their opinion is true as to how things ought to happen. And I know that we all, on a personal level, deal with these things in our decisions too. You may make a decision for your household that everybody wants to act like, well, you don't know what you're doing. They have this idea of what they're saying and stuff like this. Now, they're entitled to their opinion, but that doesn't make their opinion true. Nor, by the way, does it make your stance or position true for them as well. And what I mean by that is this. I'm reminded of a text in Mark chapter 8, and I want to read this to you to begin with, and then we'll come back and discuss what this actually ha- what, what's actually happening here. So in Mark chapter 8, pick up at verse 31, uh, it says the Lord, it's speaking of Jesus, it says these words, it says, And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes and to be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. So pausing here for one second, okay? So Jesus starts telling them, hey, this is what has to happen. This is what God has told me needs to happen. This is what my Father in heaven is leading me to do. And Peter takes him aside and rebukes him. Far be it from you, Lord. This is not going to happen to you, Jesus. No, this is not right. Peter has his opinion. Peter has his idea of what should be happening. Peter has his thoughts about what the Lord would want from him and, 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 and from everybody else in this situation. And so what ends up happening, sorry guys, what, what ends up happening here is that Peter is sitting there and he's like, and he says, Lord, this can't happen. No, it doesn't matter what you think. Your opinion, Jesus, for lack of better terms, is wrong. Well, this wasn't Jesus' opinion. This is what God had put upon his heart. Now, was this going to be right for every person? No. But the point of the matter was, this is what Jesus was called to do. So Peter rebukes him, even though Jesus knows that, in, that, God, that his Father in heaven has called him to do this. And look what he says to him. And he says, but when he had heard, uh, when, speaking of Jesus, but when he, had had, when he had turned about and looked on his disciples. Now, why did he look on his disciples? Because Peter had started to grumble. There's grumblings when he said these things. Everybody started to gossip about these things. And is this right? Is this not right? And everybody kind of started to formulate their own opinions. And all the disciples had kind of had their own ideas. So it wasn't just Peter. We kind of pick on Peter because Peter spoke up. But they all were kind of thinking these things. And so then he turns and he looks at all the disciples and he says to them, get thee behind me, Satan. Get that. He turned and looked at all the disciples and rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. See, in other words, here's the point. You don't have the full understanding that I have in this situation. Now, let's make this personal for our own lives. Right? Here's the deal. God has put things and directed me in ways to lead during this season and this time. And God has directed you in ways to the things that you need to be doing in this during this season and this time and are in your life. Help you to make decisions that are right for you and for your household in accordance to what God would want from you. And what God is desiring you to do, what God's directing your heart in. And that may be absolutely 100% correct and right for you. Now, the couple things in this is this. First and foremost, it doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. You've got to stand before the Lord himself to decide to say, this is what God directed me to do, and that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter how many people disagree with it. Just like Jesus didn't go, oh, all you disciples don't agree with this? Well, then I'm going to change. But at the same token, are you consistent? Are you carrying this through every area? If God has put this upon your heart, whatever it may be. Maybe for some people it's like, I'm not watching TV as their, as their example. God has put it upon my heart, I'm not going to watch TV anymore. That's fine. Are you only watching the TV shows that you think are, you know, are okay or whatever the case may be when you want to judge everybody else on theirs? I mean, do you understand what I'm saying here? It's, it's, you got to be consistent across the board. I'm not going to go to events where you know, there's a big crowd, but then only the events that I don't want to go to. I mean, so that's kind of the point. And so likewise, and so, so it is with us. It's like I, people have asked me, they're like, as a matter of fact, I had this this weekend with my brother as we were over in Boise. I'm like, listen, I said, are we supposed to be wearing a mask here? He's like, no, nobody's really wearing a mask here. So I said, okay, what's the rule that this store has? If we walk up, we see a sign that says, be wearing a mask. 
right? And some even say being wearing a mask if you haven't been vaccinated. And like you guys know, I've taken the position that nobody aside from my Lord and Savior, my doctor and my wife are going to know whether or not I've been vaccinated. And so if they, I walk up to a sign that says, if you've been unvaccinated, wear a mask, I'm going to wear a mask. I, but, but why? Because I don't want anybody to know whether or not I've been vaccinated or unvaccinated. They can assume whatever they want to assume. But you've got to do what is right in, your, in the eyes of the Lord for you. And stay consistent with that. And don't worry about what everybody else's opinion about that is. They can have their opinion. And for some, their opinion is fine too. God has put it upon their heart and directed them in a different direction. And for me, God's directed me in one direction. And, and, and so does that make you right and me wrong necessarily? No. Because at the end of the day, I stand before the Lord and I have to give an account for what he called me to do. You stand before the Lord and you have to give an account for what he called you to do. But what I can tell you this, if he called you to do it, let's be consistent in it. So the point of the matter is, is look at our Savior as an example. He didn't sit there and rebuke them because of having an opinion. He rebuked them because they were standing in the way of what God had directed him to do. He didn't say, hey, you guys can't think this way. This is horrible. This is good. I mean, get them behind me and say, you, know, you don't know what you're saying. He said, you don't understand the full picture. And that's part of the problem. Some of us, I know this is kind of long this morning, guys, but some people need to recognize that I, I don't, you don't, we don't have all the information about somebody's situation and the decisions they're making and why they're making them that way. And even if we had all the information and had all the thoughts that they have, God may still direct our hearts differently, but it doesn't mean he's directing their hearts wrong. So I hope this encourages you today to not sit there and listen to the opinions of men. Make sure you stand clean before the Lord, that you're consistent in your stances with the Lord, and that he receives the glory for it. And don't worry about what everybody else's opinions are. People will be offended. There's no sense in getting offended. I love you. We love you. God loves you. And God's got this.